Writing is a process that we do every day in life. We always are writing something in some manner or another. We have to take writing one step at a time in order to become good writers. So today we're going to talk about writing, the writing process, and how it all works together. This year your teacher, me, hey guys, I will be helping you guys learn how to write the type of essays and stories that we should be writing here in class. Um, there are stories that will be made up, stories about yourself or someone you know. We will be writing essays, which are like stories, but more formal. They're more important. They teach things normally. Essays are supposed to convince someone of something, or they're supposed to explain your ideas and teach. Like all good writers, you will put your writing through a process to help it be the best that it can be. Nobody, and I mean nobody, not even me, can write something and it be perfect to send out to the world. No. I don't even write an email and send it out to the world. You need to make sure that it is correct before you send things. So we're going to go over the writing process here. Starting right here, we see the stages of the writing process. we can't get it all on one screen right now, so we'll do the first three. Pre-writing. Does anybody know what pre-writing is? Pre means before. So before you actually start writing, you're going to need to brainstorm and you're going to need to come up with things. It's a little weird of a word because you are actually writing here, but you're not writing the paper. You're not writing something that you're going to submit to anybody. Right here, you are just pre-writing. You're getting all your ideas down before you lose them out of your brain. All right. So this might look like brainstorming, it might look like lists, it might look like clouds. Um, if I was pre-writing, a lot of times your pre-writing is kind of all over the place. And I don't really have a topic on the top of my head, but if we were writing about, say, sports, and I wanted to write about my favorite sport, my farmer would start with field hockey. So I would know that I'm talking about field hockey, and there's 11 players, and there's defense, and midfield, and offense, and it has to run a lot, so I can put running as like something that we're going to talk about. There's goals, corners, I don't know, for now that's good. That's my pre-writing. Those are some ideas that I'm going to want to talk about, all right? Those are things that are on my brain that I'm like, wow, these are things I can't forget if this is what I'm talking about. If I'm going to be talking about my favorite sport and feel happy, this is something I need to start with. When you start drafting, drafting is when you're actually starting to write your paper, all right? It's when you're putting your whole story together. It doesn't matter about spelling or grammar at this point. If you are making a mistake, that's okay. This is not what Miss Farmer is going to see. This is not something that's going to get turned in for a grade. It might get turned in so that I can help you revise and help you fix up, which are the following steps. But this is something that you are writing your ideas in the best sentences that you can without worrying about spelling. If you're like, oh, I can't remember how to spell this word, write it what you think it is, all right? It's okay if it's wrong. We will fix it later in the process. This is where you want to get all your story out in a story format, all right? And then we go to revising, and in revising, you take your draft and you change it. You make it work for you. You're like, wow, that sentence doesn't really make sense up there. We're going to fix it. We're going to put it down here with the rest of this where we can work with it together. And revising is where you go, okay, well, I didn't know how to spell that word. All my thoughts are out of my head now. Now I can go look it up in the dictionary. I can look it up. I can speak it. I can figure out how to spell this word correctly because spelling does matter when you're writing. Drafting, it's okay if it's a mess, but we're going to have to fix it eventually, all right? So revising is where you fix things like that. You fix your mistakes, you fix the order of operations, you get things to where they belong, where they make the most sense in your story. And then finally, we have editing. The summer will erase this now because that's not revising. Editing, what is the purpose of this? Well. Editing is where you are going to put everything correct. So in revising, you made all your changes, you put your story in order, it flows nicely. Editing, you're gonna go back through. Are there capitals? Does the, do all the, are all of the words spelled correctly? 
is everything ready to be seen by a teacher and to be published to the world, right? This is where you're re really like digging in and making sure everything's correct. Do you have the commas and punctuation where you need them? Do you have the capital letters? What is going on with your grammar? Are your words in the right order or are they a little funky? Does everything read, when you read it, does it all sound correct? Or is there just tweaks that need to be made? That's what happens in editing, all right? Those are the four stages of the writing process. Yep, four. Pre-writing, drafting, revising, and editing. We go through those every time you write, all right? Every single time. But here's the good thing. Not every single one of you will do this the same exact way. You all need to go through pre-writing, drafting, revising, and editing. You all need to do that. But you will do it differently for who you are as a human because we all do things differently and that's okay. So we're gonna listen to these two kiddos who both had to write for themselves. They had an assignment that they needed to write about. We're gonna listen to them talk about the processes that they took because even though they both did the same process, technically, they didn't really. They spent different amount of times on different parts of the process depending on how they like to write. And that's okay, as long as your final writing still comes out great, right? So first we'll listen to this young man. Everything he does. He usually plans ahead a lot, even for writing assignments. For this assignment, Nick wrote about being a soccer forward. He created an outline showing the steps he usually takes to make a goal. Then Nick added details to his outline about the skills he needed to get past the other team's defense. Nick used his outline to remind him what to put in each paragraph of his essay. Finally, he asked his dad to proofread his essay, looking for mistakes in spelling and grammar. So Nick spent a whole lot of time in the pre-writing. He was like, all right, I'm going to get all of this organized. He had lists, he had an outline so that when he was ready to actually write, he could just go into his outline and write. We'll talk more about what outlines are later, but he spent a lot of time in pre-writing. Let's see what she did. Angela also wrote about playing soccer. First, she wrote down everything she could think of that helped her score a goal. When she finished her rough draft, it was one very long paragraph full of ideas. Some of the ideas were in the wrong order, and it was hard to tell when one idea stopped and another started. So Angela made notes from her draft about ideas that should be moved somewhere else. She also marked ideas that seemed to belong together. Angela used these notes to write a much better organized second draft. So where Nick only had to write one draft, basically, because he's made such a good pre-writing outline, Angela had to write two drafts, which means she wrote the first one, and like he, like he just said, it was kind of a mess, everything was all over the place, but all of her ideas were out, which is still really important. So then she had to go back in and she had to mark up that draft and be like, okay, well this idea goes with this idea and this idea, and make them all one group of ideas. And so when she did that, she ended up having to write the paper again. And that is not like a terrible thing, guys. I don't want you to be like, oh my god, I have to do it again. Yeah, sometimes you're gonna have to write the paper again. Mentor Armour writes their papers at least three times before they get submitted anywhere. Because I do it more like Angela. I write everything down, and then I'm like, yeah, that didn't make sense. Okay, I'm gonna have to move it, I'm gonna have to switch it. And then I, re I fix it all, and I make sure they all go together, and I move the sentences around. And then I go and I read it again, and I'm like, mm. And then I normally add stuff to it, fix it up a little bit. So it's normally three drafts, and that's okay. It's okay. It's not a bad thing when you have to rewrite something. Rewriting almost always makes your writing better. All right? I don't want you to feel like somebody me, this farmer is making me rewrite this. I have to redo this. No, it's not a bad thing. I promise. Okay? It's going to make your writing better and it's going to make you smarter. So just go with it. So, what was the difference about the way the students used the writing process? Well, Nick spent a whole lot of time doing his outline. He spent a whole lot of time doing the pre-writing, but didn't revise very much. He only did like one draft, then he had to edit it, and that was pretty much it. Where Angela just started writing everything down, she kind of, I don't want to say skipped the pre-writing, because basically her first draft was her pre-writing. All right, the second draft is where she actually started to do her revising and her editing on it. So she has very little pre-writing, but had to revise quite a bit in the middle. All right, and that's, that happens. It depends on how you like to go about it. If you're like, yeah, I want to just dive right in and start writing, you're probably going to have to edit more. If you take your time and spend more time in the pre-writing, 
it'll probably go a little bit faster towards the end. It says some students need some more prep time than others. What kind of writer are you? So the word pre-writing contains the prefix pre, we talked about that, which means before. So pre-writing is something you do before you actually start writing. So there are different ways we can do pre-writing. We can do an, it shows us here. Um, hold on, I'm gonna scroll it up so we don't have to scroll and mess this stuff up later. No, 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 no. All right, we can do outlines, we can create clusters or maps, um, we can create word webs, we can spend a short amount of time writing everything you know about the topic. So that's just kind of like, I call it word vomit, you just like Bleh. Everything you know about the topic just onto the paper so that you can reorganize and do things differently. That's kind of what Angela did in the last stream. Right here is a word web. So we're talking about his first sleepover, and then we just got ideas coming out of it that he's going to want to talk about. Didn't know how to play the game, didn't know anyone, forgot toothbrush and pajamas. Oh no, this does not sound like a very good sleepover. Mom kept bringing my stuff. Wow, yeah. Doesn't sound like he had a very good sleepover, but he does a nice pre-writing here with all of his ideas. When you have a good pre-writing, it's easy to turn that into a paragraph. It's easy to turn that into something. My first sleepover was a disaster. I didn't know anyone there except Megan, and it was her house. I forgot my pajamas and my toothbrush. My mom made two separate trips to bring me what I forgot. By the time I realized I also forgot my hairbrush, I was ready to go home. Did we have all of those details over here? No, and that's okay. We have the key details that this writer needed to know to remember to write all of this stuff. She didn't even say anything about her hairbrush, but she added that in, and that's an extra detail that lets us know how she was feeling, all right? Pre-writing, going to your first draft, there's going to be more details in your first draft. There's going to be more writing in your first draft. We didn't just write first sleepover. She wrote a whole sentence. My first sleepover was a disaster, right? We didn't just write, didn't know anyone. She explained it. I didn't know anyone there except Megan and it was her house. You're not just writing lists or bullets anymore. You're writing full sentences, putting it together in a paragraph, all right? And then we got spike lanes. This is somebody just kind of word vomiting, putting everything they can think about spike lanes on the paper. Spike lanes, need for bike lanes, safety so drivers can see bikes better so bikers cannot ride over big potholes, also not getting lost with routes to follow when I got lost on my bike. So that's our pre, right? That's what we got just word vomited it out to us. And then we see Look at that, he changed this into two big paragraphs, right? The most important reason to have more bike lanes is to protect adults and children who ride bikes. Wow, he took the word safety and made it, I put that in the wrong spot, made it a three line sentence. That's his safety, it's safe. It's going to protect adults, guys. He took one word from his word vomit and made it into a huge sentence. A great starting sentence. That's what writers do, all right? You take a little bit and make it bigger, all right? A bike, in a, a bike in a bike lane is easier for drivers to see than a bike in a car lane. Also, bike lanes keep cars separate from bikes. Look at that, perfect. Most bike lanes follow a path around the city. Cities sell maps with the bike lanes marked so people can use bike lanes to find their way around. I got lost one time on my bike and I just followed a street with a bike lane and followed it until I knew where I was again. There you go. He got lost, he told the story about how he got lost. This is word vomit, this is the pre-write. Nobody wants to read that, all right? Nobody wants that, submit it, nobody wants that. We want this, this is your writing, all right? Most people, can think quickly when they write. How do you make sure that you have the best ideas on the paper? So a few things can happen when you're writing. Sometimes 
you write and you write and write and then you're like, wow, I don't, I don't have anything else to say about this. I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about about this subject. And you kind of get stuck. But other times, your brain is going so fast that you're writing here and you can't keep up with it. And you're like, oh my goodness, I have so many more thoughts. I have so much going on in here. I just need to get it all down. When that's the case, just write as fast as you can. Remember, spelling doesn't matter at this point. You're pre-writing. Get it down. Get it on the paper. All right. Um, both of these are problems. When you feel like you can't write enough or you have too much in your brain and you can't write it all out, both are problems that writers face during the drafting stage on the writing process. The result of the drafting stage is a first draft. And that may not sound great or look long enough, but it gives you something to start with. I find the hardest thing to do in writing is start when you have a blank paper in front of you or a blank computer screen and you just have to write. But I'm like, what do I write? Honestly, when the summer's writing, the first like things I write normally get chucked. I normally end up deleting it at some point, but I write it. And then I read it and I'm like, I'm a, not a fan. And then I write, but I leave it on my paper. Even when I'm not a fan of what I just wrote, I leave it on my paper and I keep writing. Because when it's on my paper, I'm like, oh, like I already got half the page done. Look at that. No, I didn't. That's all going to get deleted. But it makes me feel better and it makes the length look longer. And then when you go back and you revise and you edit and you take those things out, that's okay. Because it wasn't important to the paper or you would have already put it in. Okay? It's okay to change things. It's okay to leave bad stuff on a paper to help you write more good stuff. All right? That's all right. Do, 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 do. Look again. From the summer of these before. All right, this is all talking about editing. Editing is what you do to make a piece of paper ready for publication. Publication means to like send it out to pub, to put it to the public, right? Publication, public, yeah, you get that, no? Okay. Um, so when we're getting ready to put it into the public, for you guys, sometimes the public might just be to me. You might just be sending it to me, and that's your public right now. That's okay. Sometimes your public might be your classmates. Sometimes there might be competitions where I allow you guys or I, I give you the opportunity to work in these competitions that you can get your books published. Here, let me show you real quick. I'm sorry. I had a student I had a student three years ago publish. This is a real book, guys. This book is in the Loving County Library. Oh, the summer has it upside down. I had a student write this book because we worked through the process. And there's a competition every year at the Lebanon Public Library for writing a book. We're gonna try to do that this year, but that comes later. That's like in the spring, all right? She wrote a book, guys. She got published. You can go to the library and check it out. Her book is called Katie Black and the Book Project by Riley Bray, all right? Writing is a real thing. People do it. Kids, she was younger than you guys. She got published, all right? Editing is when we make sure we're ready to be published, whether it's to me or to a book, all right? This is where we make sure it was ready. Um, when we are ready to publish though, it's really important to have somebody read your draft before, you're, before you submit it, all right? You want somebody to tell you that it sounds okay, that it looks good, that the punctuation is good, but you also want to ask them questions and they are going to want to ask you questions. So this, somebody wrote this and now they're ready to publish it. Let's see if they're actually ready to publish it, all right? I went to camp for the first time this past summer. I was there for two weeks and I had, the, I had a great time. I made a lot of good friends and learned some new skills too. I even got to go fishing at night. That sounds awesome. But as a reader, I have some questions. All right. The first thing I want to know, what camp did you go to? What was it called? Where was it? Those are important, right? You're telling me how great camp was. Well, I want to go to camp. What camp did you go to? All right. That's an important question. Um, that's like the first one and the biggest one in my brain. 
where do you go, what camp was it? Also, do, 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 I, sorry, lost my question. What was your favorite part? You told me you had a great time and you got to go fishing. What was your favorite thing that you did? Um, and then we also have some, this is gonna give us some questions, but those are some possible questions. Oh, what skills did you learn at camp? What was the camp called? Like I asked, what, where was it? What, what was it? And what activities did he do at camp? So he told us he learned new skills, so what skills? And he told us he went fishing, but what else did he do? Like that picture shows jumping in a pool. Did he go swimming or was that just a random picture? Right? So when you are writing, like this is well written, it's good, but there's still questions answer the questions and it's going to be better, longer, and more detailed, all right? That's just a hint. So again, when you're trying to get your ideas down on paper, um, it doesn't it's not necessarily super duper important for your spelling to be right back in the pre-writing and in the drafting phase. Like here we can see somebody's draft and it says, whistling is something I learned to do at an early age. My grandpa taught me how he used a birthday candle to help me know how to hold my lips. Not a bad antidote, not a bad story. Um, terrible spelling. Awful. Um, if I was going through this as a teacher with my red pen to mark it up, I would say, okay, well, this word is spelled wrong. This is spelled wrong. This does not need capitalized. This is spelled wrong. Uh, birthday is spelled wrong. Candle is spelled wrong. This is the wrong kind of no. So, oh, I forgot what it was spelled wrong. There's like a lot more stuff on here, right? That's okay. Because in your draft, it's okay to have spelling errors. When you submit this to me, it's not going to look like this anymore, but rather it's going to look like this. Whistling is something that I learned to do at an early age. Oh, this. My didn't he capitalize, but we missed a period is what we missed over there. My grandpa taught me how. He used a birthday candle to show me how to hold my lips. Words changed and the words he had misspelled be fixed. It's okay to have a draft that looks like this. It's not okay to have a final submission that looks like this. All right? There's dictionaries, there's resources. Use them in order to get a final draft that looks like it's ready to be seen by other human eyes, okay? All right. You guys are going to do a quick seesaw activity where you are writing. I'm gonna give you a topic. You're gonna to complete it. You're gonna write as much as you can. There's going to be separate slides because I wanna see pre-writing. I want to see your first draft, and I want to see you edit it and fix it up. I want to see the revising. I want to see the editing, all right? So I should see a pre-writing. I should see first draft, which might be sloppy and a mess, and that's okay. And then I should see another slide where you fixed it and you made it better. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always ask me. I want to see what you can write. That's what I need to see. And then when you're finished with that, or even before you start it, your choice on the order right now. I need you to go and take the quiz. Take the writing quiz. There are only four questions. Do your best, all right? I'm not gonna go over this one with you. You can go back into the video and look wherever you need, all right? Good luck, and I will see you later.